Welcome, everybody. I am joined today by Tiffany Henning with HR Ministry Solutions. Tiffany, thank you for joining me today. Certainly. Tiffany yep. is a veteran in the church and ministry human resources world with over 20 years of combined experience. In 2016, Tiffany founded HR Ministry Solutions, a faith-based nonprofit specifically created to simplify HR compliance and staff pain points for churches and ministries. Tiffany, thank you for joining me today to talk about uh, burnout among pastors and church staff and ways that we can avoid it. I served in the ministry for over a decade, and so I know how challenging it can be. What are some of the signs maybe that pastors and church staff should be looking out for when it comes to things like burnout? Yeah, that's a really good question. And I know you and I have talked previously about it, but just the nature of ministry in general is that your brain is on 24 seven because you care, you care about the people. This is your church, your tribe, your community, and uh, it's your purpose and your passion. That's why you were called to ministry, you know, not because of the fancy perks that you get, yeah. you know, so it's- Or the paycheck. And, yeah, exactly. And and so because of that, your brain is always on and, yeah. um, but, but ministry burnout is super, super, super high. And especially, um, with this COVID going on, just increases it all that much. In fact, churches should consider everybody on staff right now, burned out, <laughs> mm. stressed out and burned out just because if they're not there, they'll be there soon because we've been running in the season, doing things that we haven't normally done and having to pivot on a daily basis. And so doing that for an extended period of time causes burnout because, what happens is you have stress and stress is fine. You know, usually stress is meant to be there for a little time and then goes away. But when yeah. you get burnout is when you live in the stressed world permanently, and then it leads to burnout, which leads to depression. But, um, you know, some people don't recognize it in themselves. I think other people will recognize it in them first, mm. um, which is a big thing. Um, some of the things, um, they become shorter um, more impatient, more angry, become a little bit more emotional, cry a little bit, you know, of course we are Christmas Hallmark season, so <laughs> we cry over everything anyways, but you know, when you're watching, you know, a, a Disney movie with your kids and you're crying <laughs> and you're like, wow, why, why am I crying? Um, you know, the insomnia, the, the, you're mm. tired all the time and then yet you can't sleep. In fact, the most effective and productive people in the world are those who get good sleep, at least eight hours every night. Um, addiction. And we're not just talking, you know, people always think the huge drug addict, but we all have escapes and we all have certain things that we're more prone to like alcohol is not an escape for me, but basically reading novels is an escape for me. And mm. it's not bad. It's just that I will get so focused on it and read it so much that I will just kind of tune everything out. And so we just need to be careful of those things that we're using as escape could be binge watching too much TV. It could be food <laughs> again, hard in this time of the year, but sometimes it's like, yeah. like I found myself in the season going, oh, like almost every day. Oh, I need a big gulp soda. I need a big gulp soda. Cause that was my, my knee jerk stress reaction and, and yeah. realizing, okay, it's not good for me to be having this, this much all the time. I think really paying attention to those things. If the things that used to excite you don't really excite you anymore, I feel like uh -huh. I'm doing some sort of commercial, but, um, you yeah. know, I've been in burnout, I think about three times in my life and I love people are going to think I'm crazy. I love going to Walmart. My husband hates it oh, no. <laughs> to, to him. It's equivalent of purgatory, but to me, I love going to Walmart, especially early in the morning when very few people are there. I love it. And I could tell that something was wrong when I was in the middle of Walmart and it was not my happy place anymore. And I was having like an anxiety attack for no reason at all. Now, some people have an anxiety attack say, in Walmart. It's probably normal. Just, <laughs> if I find myself at Walmart, that's, I immediately start asking myself all yes. kinds of extensive <laughs> questions. <laughs> totally. But it's again, it's knowing yourself and then realizing what I used to enjoy, I'm not enjoying anymore. Yeah. And people think burnout is a big, crazy mess, but it's really just a slow fade of, you know, a mixture of all these things. And it looks different in everyone. Yeah, definitely. What are some other um, uh, signs or symptoms of burnout that people maybe should be looking out for? Um, you mentioned anger. I know one of the ones that I struggled with when I was in ministry is feeling a uh, sort of sense of inadequacy or powerlessness. Oh, yeah. Like uh, no matter what I did, I wasn't going to be able to make a difference in it. And mm -hmm. you begin to question whether or not you should even keep trying, you know, because yes. it, there's just this uh, nature, there's this side of work, particularly in ministry where 
Um, you know, you come up with these great plans and then you inevitably run into people and, you know, messy people <laughs> and implementing it and, uh, yeah, it never turns messy. out quite the way you want. And, and it can be, make you feel very inadequate and very powerless. Mm -hmm. I know that was something I struggled with. Um, what are some other things maybe that people should be looking for in themselves as signs of burnout? I think definitely um, what you just talked about, not just inadequacy, but just wanting to run away from it all, you know, Ooh, going, okay. I just want to quit. You know, I just don't want anything to do. And to be honest with you, because I'm honest to a fault, like this last week, I've been going to myself, do I even want to run this nonprofit anymore? Now, now give me, don't get me wrong. I, you know, the moment I get there, I have to basically then step back because I go, no, God led me here. God, I have to remind myself of how God has been faithful in the past. I have to remind myself, even sometimes write out how I got to where I am and what yeah. God did to um, make everything come together. And then reminds me, no, this is the way I, where I need to be just because I'm tired and I'm stressed and all of this stuff. It makes us just want to run away, go get a real job. You know, <laughs> uh, we all say that real job um, again, being right where God wants you to be is really the safest place you can be. So when people start to feel that they just need to take a step back from the emotions, you mm. need to pay attention to the emotions, but you need to take a step back from the emotions and don't make any quick decisions, especially Ooh, yeah. huge life-changing decisions. You need to get wisdom from people around you. You need to spend time in prayer and worship. Even if you can't pray, I say, just put on headphones, worship music, and just close your eyes. And like I mentioned before, list out the things that God has done for you in the past that he's been faithful because we are in it for the long haul. So yeah, definitely. So I know that we talked about earlier, um, you know, one of the challenges when it comes to facing burnout is, is oftentimes it's a result of maybe not having clear boundaries. I know that that's something that people in ministry struggle with is, and it's, it's even worse now in COVID with, um, you know, a lot of people working from home, mm -hmm. um, schools being closed and, you know, parents having to take care of kids while working. And so all the sort of boundaries that we typically had in our lives of, you know, just kind of like, fallen apart. Uh, but that's a, that's one of the uh, struggles in the ministry. I know when I was serving, um, I would get a call from my friend who is, uh, our pastoral care person who go visit people in the hospitals. And one time he called me on vacation. Uh, I was still in town cause I couldn't afford to leave town, for vacation. I but I was still in town and he wanted me to go visit somebody in the hospital. And at first I thought, Oh yeah. But then it was, uh, a friend of a friend of somebody who was at our church that was in the hospital. And I had to take a step back and go, no, I, I know this person is sick, but I, I don't need to go visit them right now because I have to, I have to have some sort of boundaries in my life so that I can continue to actually do ministry. And I had to remind myself that it wasn't, it wasn't because I didn't care about people. It's because I was trying, I had to make sure that I was there for my wife and for the ministry that I was in because uh, I had to set those boundaries. Um, so what are some things that people can do to set boundaries or healthy boundaries and maybe avoid burnout in the long run? And that's a great question. And you know, it's funny, I think in a lot of ways, we all kind of know what we already need to do, but we feel like, oh, we're fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm passionate. I'm fine. There's nothing wrong with me. And then all of a sudden there is. Mm -hmm. um, I love this quote. It's by uh, Brady Boyd. He says, we are invited to work hard and retreat frequently. It's the retreating frequently that we forget in ministry mm -hmm. and trust that whatever falls through the cracks while we're, we're retreating will get tackled during our next working hard time the universe will really keep spinning. And I think, I love that because I think sometimes in ministry, we, we think we're humble and we, we don't mean to be prideful, but I think a lot of times we feel like, oh, if I don't do that, it won't get done. Well, you know what? God is God <laughs> and he will take care of the need. So if we like you with the vacation time, putting up the boundaries, no, I'm on vacation. I know this person really needs this, but you know what? There's a lot of other people who could step in and do this for this person. We yeah. just need to get creative. And so that is actually one of the key things is that when we take days off, when we take time off, we don't turn off our phones and we don't turn off our emails. People in ministry all the time are like, well, I just want to check my emails either because they want to make sure everything's moving along or they want to make sure that they don't come back to 800 emails. And I'm like, no, because you cannot disconnect your brain. You are not really taking a vacation. You're not really at rest. So I tell them, and again, this starts from leadership down, but turn off your emails on your days off. Let your bosses know 
hey, I'm going to turn off my email. I'm going to turn off my phone. If it's an emergency, you are the only one allowed to call me and only call me if it's an emergency mm, yeah, and yeah. set those boundaries. And you know what? Your bosses are going to appreciate that because again, when you come back, you're going to work really hard and cover for other people. And then people go, well, things will fall through the cracks. Well, no, you put an out of office reply and tell people who to contact in your absence. That's mm. easy. Probably one of the other things that is my pet peeve, do not have your email being on your phone. <laughs> that oh, is yeah. the worst. Yeah. Don't have automatic or your, notifications. Or your smartwatch. Yes, yes. You know, basically have it set up so that you have to deliberately and intentionally go in and check the email. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, and learn to set your phone aside. Those are some big things that I talk about first and foremost, because we don't take our time off. One of the other things when you are working is, and I, and I love this, I really heard about this. Um, you really figure out what your best energy time is. We all have about two to three hours a day. That's our energy time. For me, it's usually between like 930 and 1130. Like mm -hmm. I am, I could take on the world during those couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> you know, before I eat lunch, once I eat lunch, it's all downhill from there, but mm -hmm. that's my best energy time. So, you know, I take the stuff that is either most draining or that I need the most brain power to work on. I do it during that time. Mm -hmm. I don't wait to when it's three o'clock in the afternoon and you know, my brain matter is mush, <laughs> you know, yeah. because then I won't be able to do it. Um, and then work in blocks of time take breaks. Yeah. There was this, um, you know, there's all sorts of different productivity planners and stuff like that. But one I really saw, which was break your work up into 25 minute increments. Hmm. Um, and, and it's like, do 25 minutes at a time, especially if it's a big project and you're like, Ugh. you know, you keep pushing it to the side. Cause you're like, it's so big. I don't want to do it. The work there always, there will always be work. And I know that you said that there'll always, always be fires. There will always be work. And the only way we're going to make it in the long haul is by taking those breaks frequently and often, just like Jesus did. You know, he left the crowd of 5,000 where there's still people who needed healing and wanted to hear his preaching, but he still, he withdrew and spent time investing his 12, investing his three, and then, you know, praying to God directly himself. Yeah, definitely. I know that uh, when I was, when I started out in the ministry in 2006, working full time, uh, social media was not a thing. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, it was emails and it was phone calls and people actually physically showing up to the office. But at, over the years, by the time I left my last church in 2017, uh, you know, Facebook was part of my job. And so just going on Facebook and scrolling was, I would end up working when I was away from the office. Mm -hmm. And then when I was in the office, <laughs> I was going to Facebook <laughs> to distract myself from working. Uh, and it, I had to get to the point where I said, you know, I'm, I'm not just going to set my phone aside, but I'm, I'm not even going to log into Facebook. I did this thing where uh, you can log out and tell it to forget, forget your device so that when you log back in, it has to like send you a code and make it harder to log back. Oh. Into Facebook. <laughs> That's a good like, idea. I yeah, love it. Create, create a couple different uh, friction points along the way where I'm going like, do I really want that to send a reminder to my phone just so I can log into Facebook? Maybe I shouldn't be logging in. It's vacation, but we have to figure out how to set those boundaries. Absolutely. Like we talked about with COVID, you know, usually like you said earlier, <laughs> coming home was kind of our break that we're not working anymore. Well, now our home yeah. and work is just merged. And so really creating a space at home that is separate, um, not in the family room with everyone, but is separate that way you, you put in your set hours, you have set in times, and then you walk away from it. I've even told people, Hey, for like 10 bucks or even less a month, you can go to magic Jack and get a virtual number or freedom voice and oh, get a virtual yeah. number and have that be, um, either your number that you give out to people and it can roll into your phone. But the thing is when it rolls into your phone, you can see that it, it's coming from that virtual number. So, yeah. you know, it's your, you know, it's your office or or if you want to use that number for your close friends and family so that you can ignore the phone when you see that number and you're on a day off or on vacation, you go, oh, okay, I'm going to answer it because it's not work. You know, gone are the days where people had two different phones. People used to have a work phone I and know. a personal phone, and now it's all rolled into one and uh, we can never truly unplug. I would also say on your computer, set it so it doesn't automatically check your emails. I get into Ooh. this habit where I see that little email box pop up and I want to just take care of it immediately. But I learned at a previous a place that I worked, 
uh, you know, one of the pastors, she set three times aside a day that she checked and responded to emails. So like first thing in the morning, then like an hour in the middle of the day, and then right before she left for the day. And she trained people that she was working with that not to expect an answer in 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And it also helped her because multitasking doesn't work. We all think we're great at it, but studies show it actually takes us longer and stresses us more out if we multitask. So I think if we really kind of go, okay, I'm going to check and respond to my emails now. Now I'm going to spend the next hour and work on this project. You know, you definitely will lower your stress level and be more effective in what you're doing. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, thank you. Um, These are all great tips. I know there's a lot more things that we could do, um, and we'll probably list those uh, in an article on our website. And I know that you also have some good resources about caring for staff uh, on your website, HR Ministry Solutions. So I would encourage you guys, if you get a chance, to go check out uh, Tiffany's website and her ministry and uh, and to pay attention to these kinds of things. Well, thank you for talking with me today, Tiffany, Um, and uh, hopefully we can connect with you again in January. Uh, on that webinar that we're looking forward to. So uh, you guys can go on our website, churchsalary.com, and find out more details about that. Uh, And we'll uh, hopefully talk to you soon. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Tiffany.